In the last segment, you saw me cut out the patterns that we're going to use and the 20 by 21 shape, which is going to be the back of the pillow. And you also saw me cut out the 14 by 14 piece. So in theory, what's going to happen is we're going to create a border for this pillow that is going to be this is going to be the back of the pillow and then this is going to be the front of the pillow it'll it'll look good this way so I'll, I'm turning it this way so that you can see how it's going to look next we're going to measure and cut four individual black pieces of canvas that will then be sewn to this 14 by 14 piece and then we're going to take that attachment once it has the four corners miter corners in place we're going to sew it and attach it to the back side of this pillow all right so it's starting to come together i'm going to move this out the way four by 20 strips that will become the miter on the actual pillow so i'm going to go ahead and measure to the edge here and mark off so I'm going to make this adjustment okay so that'll be one right there here Measure over another four. So we got twelve. Then we're going to measure another four. we mark this off at 20. And make sure that these are all 20 across. I'm going to measure it in different places and make sure that you're good on all your angles.
this together, how our pillow is going to look. Leave that there for a minute. We're going to now place these how it's going to starting to take shape now and in order to make this really work what we have to do is we have to remove this piece for a minute and grab our pins and literally start to create the miter for each of these now it's a interesting way to do it but just bear with me what we're going to do is we're going to take and bend this corner in a 45 degree angle right and eventually we'll take the iron and crease it but I just want to place them for now so you can see how this is going to look do the same with this take the corner and go this way So you can see the corner. And what I love about projects like this, especially if you decide you want to get into doing um, clothing, it's really all about the shape of the fabric and what you're doing with it. And fabric is so flexible, you can get it to do pretty much anything. do is once we have everything it's just semi-pressed we're going to take the iron and get these to perform the way that they need to So you make sure your corners are good and sharp.
sometimes being down here working on my projects is the absolute best part of my day and there's many a nights I will come down here after a long day's work and just work on a project. It's very relaxing and it's gratifying when you're doing work, especially when you're doing projects for customers or helping them to figure out a design solution. Helping them to bring their colors and everything together. It's like an absolute joy to be able to do that. And everything is melding together really nicely. down a little bit so you can see how this comes together. It's one of those 45 degree angles. This is the only time I tell you when it made sense to me in school because I am not a math person. But when you apply it to something that you like to do, you get it. I totally get it. All right, and so now what we do after this portion here is just match everything up nice and see how things are coming together. We're gonna have to sew it down, of course, and that'll help. Um, part of the reason why we do the we do the four by twenty is, of course, so that we can miter the edges together. But then we need a seam in order to sew our fourteen by fourteen square to. So this square is actually going to, when it's all said and done. It'll look a little bit more like this underneath. Just put it underneath. Right? It's coming together really nicely. And now, once all of this is sewn down, we'll be able to attach it to the back piece of the pillow insert the zipper and then we'll bring the whole project together. So that is the goal. We are going to go to the machine and we are going to sew these triangles together. I'm going to sew these together on the line and we're going to come within a half inch from the inside because when we get to attach it to this 14 by 14 piece you have to stop and allow it to attach by the seam when we're sewing. This is going to make sense a little bit later on but I'm just showing you how we're lining this up for the next step in this process. So now we're heading over to the sewing machine so that we can actually miter these edges together. We have this one finished and what I wanted to be able to show you was I usually do one corner at a time and that way if I have to make any adjustments I can make those adjustments. So I wanted to show you what eventually that back side will look like. Once we, I'm going to turn it on the pivot and then we'll do the next corner. All right, so once again, you piece the corners together. You've got your 45 degree angles. And um, it wasn't until really I started sewing and making things that my math started to connect with a real time scenario. And sewing has always been that real time scenario for me anyway. 
Math is just not my thing, but I, I kind of get it now. And the thing about working with fabric is when you're working with shapes and you're cutting and forming things, making things, working with straight lines is the beginning, but the skills that you learn here, you can definitely parlay them into custom clothing because I have on occasion made, um, you know, like pajama pants and things of that nature. So if this is something you're really serious about doing, you definitely can branch out from here. Now, one of the reasons why I love using duck cloth, which is some sometimes it's synonymous with canvas, you will typically find duck cloth or canvas in a lot of nautical settings, especially in the seating because it's water resistance, hence the word duck cloth because water rolls off. And so I really love working with it, especially with the outdoor fabric that we're using for this pillow. There, it's perfect. It's the perfect combination for outdoor furnishings. And if you have a yacht or boat and you want to spruce things up, this is the perfect material to use. There you go. Take a look at it. And then remember, on the back of this, we're going to have to mark it so that we don't sew past the half inch mark. And I know that's really hard to see unless I do it on this surface. So in other words, we're going to just make sure that we keep a half inch free because we are attaching it to the 14 by 14 piece and if you sew it all the way down there's no opening to accommodate the angle of the material that is eventually going to make it into that little divot right there but you'll see how this comes together shortly all right so we're going to go ahead we've marked our corner we've got our crease here our fold but we've ironed it down and so now we're going to go ahead make sure you stay in the crease and pay very close attention to that crease and stay in that little line move the machine on. It's one thing that's always on a frame. Okay. Go ahead. next series when I start working with my drapery I'm gonna have to put my lovely daughter's machine into storage because my machine is a little bit more sophisticated and it'll help us get through our projects now and I mentioned to you about your this is your decision to purchase a machine and I just said basically the, my recommendation is to base it on how often you're going to be using it, right? If you're just going to be doing an occasional bedroom here or there, then I would suggest sticking to something like this because it's like a screwdriver or a hammer or a drill. You pull it out when you need it, that kind of thing, all right? And so what we're going to do is trim this corner because that one looks good. We don't have to redo it. And just do a parallel line. And we're going to iron this down. And just trim it up a little bit. And just 
trim it because we don't want it to ex go beyond the outer edges of our mitered pillow. Let's trim it up a little bit. And then we'll move on to the next one. And it's coming together very nicely. Again, almost like a perfect picture frame or a perfect canvas picture frame. All right, so I'm going to rotate it again. And do this one next. Meet those and match them up. And from there, I'm going to put a placeholder here so that it doesn't shift. Normally, I only need one. So, but again, we're going to turn it. And use that Taylor's chalk to mark that half inch right there across that line. needle for it. It also helps to lock your fabric down so it doesn't slip out. Okay, foot down, all right. start working on the drapery projects that we're going to be doing in the shades I am going to have to use this whole table so I'm working on a way to perhaps work at the other end and that way you can get a chance to see me really do my thing that looks good all right I'm going to go ahead and trim that down Again, parallel to the cut that's there. Iron it down. Everything's nice and flat. Makes everything, the sewing project, run a lot smoother than smoothly. Awesome. Okay, got one more in to attach. Or one more angle to connect. And the same goes true for wood. Think about that if you're doing a frame. And we are actually doing a segment for our shades. We're going to make custom shades that actually work. So we're going to create a pulley system and we're going to go outside, work with a saw. Normally I would work with a circular saw, but I don't even know what happened to it, which is weird. That's okay. It's good to learn things sometimes the manual way anyway. All right, let's just do another pan. And so I have all kinds of wood under the table here, lumber that I keep handy for those shade projects. So I'm looking forward to doing that with you as well.
typical day normally consists of working my oops, working my nine to five and being a part of a a pretty good professional working group of people and I usually start dinner during the day just prepping doing stuff like that making a salad or whatever and then taking something out to cook on thaw whatever the case may be this is our last angle here and then after that after everybody's good to go I come down here to my lab and get to work on any projects that I might have or just something new that I want to try and I really really became interested in sewing when I was in design school we all had to do internships and um, I chose to do my internship with a professional um, custom window soft furnishing fabricator and so I went out on appointments we measured windows we worked with the client to select fabrics whatever treatments they wanted to have installed and then from there I went to an installation course in North Carolina and learned how to do shades and install the hardware for windows and then from there it just became something that was second nature and being able to sew has definitely been a compliment to my interior design business so they definitely go hand in hand because normally this is the part where I would hand it off to someone and they would come and do all of the measurements, but because that's something that I know how to do, I sort of eliminated the middleman. Unless it's a huge project or if it's one of those houses that has two-story windows where you need scaffolding and all of that to get up there, I can still help with the design portion and work with the client to give them good ideas on how to build their design palette so here we are it's all finished and as I said you're gonna have this these openings on the corners because when you attach the 14 by 14 square it needs somewhere to attach to and you'll see that coming up in the next segment ultimately we have everything ironed down trimmed up and it is ready to go